I, I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, so let's start. Uh, runtime polymorphism usually connects with virtual tables and virtual functions. In this presentation, I will show you a modern C++ technique that leverages variant and visit. This C++ 17 technique might offer not only better performance and value semantics, but also interesting design pattern that everybody can use during usual work. So uh, agenda for today, we're going to talk about uh, ordinary uh, virtual polymorphism using virtual functions. And I will show you how to use polymorphism using STD variant and STD visit, calling functions, passing arguments. Uh, we are going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of STD variant polymorphism and going to talk about benchmark and performance using uh, polymorphism with STD variant. Uh, in many cases, when you hear runtime polymorphism, you immediately imagine virtual function. You declare a virtual function in a base class, and then you overwrite in the derived classes. When you call such a function on a reference or pointer to base class, then the compiler will invoke the correct overload. In most of the classes, compilers implement this technique with virtual tables, with tables. Each class that has a virtual method contains an extra table that points to the address of the member function. And before each call to a virtual method, the compiler needs to look at virtual table and resolve the address of a derived function. Here is a simple example with base class and two uh, derived classes that implements print name. Nothing new, this is ordinary dynamic polymorphism. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what are advantages of this technique? The, the syntax is built inside the language, so it's very neutral and convenient way to write code. If you want to add a new type, then you just write a new class, no need to change the base class. It's object oriented and it allows deep hierarchies. You can store a heterogeneous types in the single container like base class and just store a pointer to the base class and passing parameters to the function is easy. But there are a lot drawbacks using this uh, uh, dynamic polymorphism. Virtual method must be resolved before the call, so there is extra performance overhead. Compilers try too hard to devirtualize calls, and since you need pointer to call the method, usually it also meets dynamic allocation, uh, which might add even more performance cost. If you want to add new virtual method, then you need to run across the base class and all derived classes to add the, this new method. Uh, however, in uh, standard C++ 17 uh, and also before find the boost libraries, it also was available in boost library er earlier. Uh, we got another way of doing polymorphism. Let's have a look. Uh, it's using std variant, which is available uh, uh, since C17. You can now use safe type unions and store many different types in single object instead of pointer to a base class. 
and using std variant can store all derived class. Uh, if somebody not familiar with a variant, it's safe type union and has ability to use complex type and the full support of their lifetime. If you switch the type, then the proper destructor is called and why we don't memory leak. Uh, and uh, you know that uh, the way to know uh, active type using uh, method holds alternatives. Um, and uh, on this slide provided two classes, derived and extra derived. And you can see there is no base class now, and we can have a bunch of unrelated types now. And now a core uh, variant that holds derived and extra derived classes. Uh, bar defines objects that can be uh, derived or extra derived, or even more we can add here by default, it's initialized with the default value of, of the first alternatives. It's derived class uh, by default, uh, var is holded. Uh, now, uh, how we can call this method print name? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we need two things, a callable object and a std visit. Uh, call print name is callable object and a std visit that calls appropriate method of the active uh, type, active class that holds in a variant. In the example, uh, I created a struct that implement to overload uh, for the call operator and as the visit takes the variant object and called the correct overload. And also, uh, we, uh, also we can express the visitor with the generic lambda. And uh, it's here is provided gen generic lambda and called print name uh, from the here, from the uh, derived or extra derived class. Mm. And as the visit, it's color, it's lambda, and var is, uh, uh, it's our uh, uh, variant from this. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, our printing function don't take any arguments, but what, what happens if you need some arguments? With the regular functions, it's easy. Uh, no, just write uh, uh, the method with arguments that takes argument one or, or more, or two or more arguments, but it's not straightforward with our function object. The main issue is that as the visit doesn't have a way to pass arguments in the callable objects. And it only takes a function object and a list of std variant object or single one in our case. One way to solve this inconvenience is to create extra data member to store the parameter and manually pass them into the call operator. And here is provide a call print callable object and add a new member. And in our case, we should provide parameter using callable object and pass it in uh, STD visit. 
and uh, using uh, lambda uh, we we can capture a argument and then forward it to the member function here is uh, example uh, using lambda uh, uh, it's our derived in extra derived classes with the print name that has parameter and it's generic lambda with argument. Uh, now let's consider the pros and cons of such approach. Uh, and we can see difference compared with virtual dispatch. Uh, here is advantages and disadvantages of polymorphism with STD variant. Uh, regarding advantages, its value semantics, no dynamic allocation. It's easy to add a new method. Uh, you have to implement a new callable structure. No need to change the implementation of the classes. Uh, there is no need the base class. Classes can be unrelated and die typing, while virtual function need to have the same signature. And uh, regarding these advantages, uh, you need to know all types upfront at compile time, and this forbids design such as plugin system. It's also hard to add new type, as the means changing the type of the variant and all visitors, and uh, also might uh, waste memory. Like a union as the variant has the size which is max size of the supported types. So if one type has 10 bytes and another has 100 bytes, then each variant will be at least 100 bytes. So potentially you lose uh, 90 bytes. And it's die typing. It's like advantages and also disadvantages, depending on the rules you need to enforce the function and types. And each operation requires to write a separate visitor. Organized then might be something be an issue. And there is another difficulty, it's passing parameters. As the day visit doesn't have any interface for it. Uh, and another critical questions you may want to ask is about performance and benchmark of a new technique. And is this visit faster than virtual polymorphism? And let's take a look and consider uh, an example, a real example, and take a look and benchmark. And previously I showed you some basic and artificial examples, but let's try something more useful and realistic. Imagine a set of classes that represent a label in UI. It's a base class I label. Um, uh, we can have simple label, which is just some text, then date label, and then show the date value, and then icon label that also renders some icon next to the text. Here is provided appropriate classes. Uh, no, nothing new, it's ordinary virtual polymorphism or, or dynamic polymorphism. Uh, and it implements built HTML class that's overrides in each classes. Uh, and, uh, and consider we have use case where we have a vector with pointer to a I label class, base class, and we call the virtual function to generate the final HTML output. And then consider the case with uh, variant. It's uh, 
simple label that implements label, date label, and icon label. There is no base class and no virtual dispatches and no uh, inheritance. And callable object is HTML label builder that overrides operator brackets and in and call appropriate uh, object and and uh, so why the code might be faster and let's take a look on benchmark I'm going to share provided benchmark. Uh, here is quick benchmark com resource and where you can uh, calculate uh, a, a benches of your code and you can uh, play with uh, compilers, uh, C++ standards, optimization, and even STL libraries. Mm. And here, uh, as I showed previously, here is provided uh, a label base class uh, derived class, a simple label, date label that overrides uh, built HTML uh, method. And uh, using uh, variant uh, example, uh, here is a simple label uh, classes, then we, we can use this variant and callable object then uh, we need to call this std visit and here is provided method that calculate benches uh, it's a method that calculate a bench uh, with a runtime polymorphism and uh, we created a, a vector uh, with pointers uh, on I label base class and add all, all derived classes to the vector and in the loop uh, call it and build HTML. And uh, another method that calculate uh, variant labels. And, uh, here is, we have a variant with uh, three types, simple label, date type, and icon label, and add uh, this variance to the vector, and the same in the loop, we uh, build label HTML and render it. Uh, let's run it for clear example, for clean example, we clear cache result and run benchmark. It takes some time. Uh, oh, uh, here something unpredictable happens. As you can see, unique label is faster than variant label. But, but during my test, it, it was vice versa. Uh, well, just try to Change style, the same. It's slower variant type, but uh, I, I I investigated this example a bit, 
and I guess uh, I thought uh, the string handling has high cost over the whole code execution. Uh, also, there are not many types in variant, so this makes the actual core call uh, slower with variant example. But I played with different compilers and different compilers shows different results. Oh, you can see a unique PTR slower. Y using uh, runtime polymorphism is slower than uh, polymorphism using variant. And as you can see, it's one times faster than runtime polymorphism. Yeah, I think it happens uh, because of there are not lots members in variant, but uh, I played uh, with, it, with this example and add more than 10 object in variant and it, it shows better and faster uh, result than runtime polymorphism uh, using unique pointers. Excuse me, I thought that uh, operator using can cost some time in runtime, no? Uh, 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 using label variant? Yes, in first uh, in first uh, um, function you don't have this operator, in the second you have, and uh, I guess it can uh, have some impact to time of uh, execution. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, it could be. Needs to take a look. Uh, and return to our presentation. And here is, I provided a link to a benchmark and everybody who is interested in can play with it. And here is more information. We can take a look uh, where it useful, this real examples uh, using uh, STD visit and STD variant polymorphism. Uh, during C++ conference in uh, 2018, there was provided a good example how we can use a state machine design pattern uh, uh, using STD variant. And it show a crucial performance to comparison with uh, runtime polymorphism. Here is to YouTube link with this example. And as in conclusion, as the variant based polymorphism, uh, I think uh, better than regular virtual polymorphism, but there is no clear answer as both have their strengths and weaknesses. For example, with STD variant, you need to know all the possible types upfront, it might not be the case when you write a generic library or some kind of plugin system. But on the other hand, STD variant offers value semantic, which might be improve the performance of the system and reduce the need to use dynamic allocation. That's it for my side. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, welcome.